Hey, the end of this month is Youth Sunday. Youth Sunday. So this coming, the end of the month weekend, the 28th, 29th, I think somewhere in there, uh, that Saturday we're having a mission day. Don't forget that. All right, that Saturday, we're going to meet here that Saturday morning. That Friday night, we're going to meet here. We're going to meet here that Friday night. We'll be at the Mint Springs. Uh, we'll have just like a short, brief, a uh, little sermon, lesson, whatever. And then we're going to have like sit around the campfire, pick and grin, just have a good time of fellowship. Please come be a part of that. That's on Friday night. That's the 28th, the Friday night. That Saturday morning, we're going to have breakfast right here. Uh, we'll need to know a count as it gets closer. How many's coming for breakfast? That Saturday, under the leadership of our seniors, we're going to do mission work all day Saturday. We'll come back, give everybody enough time to jump in the shower, whatever. We're going to come back Saturday night and meet again at the Mint Springs. And we're going to have a campfire. Daniel Stewart, y'all remember him? He'll be here. He'll be presenting the gospel or whatever he wants. And then he'll be here Sunday morning to preach. Fun building weekend. If you love Jesus. If you don't love Jesus, don't show up. <laughs> or show up and get right. So, a good weekend. Like I said, under the leadership of our seniors, uh, their direction on what we're going to do that Saturday. I ain't even talked to them yet. Don't know what that is yet. I talked to one, and he's got nothing. So, hopefully the other one's got something. So, anything else? Just breakfast Saturday, church buck is cooking, he's bringing some buck. He has your number and everything. And I told him, if you need something, don't call me. Call Terry, because I don't know where nothing's at or how anything works. So he's got your number, and he said he'd be in contact with you. I figured he would have before now, because he says he's going to call you son. <coughs> but Trey will be talking to him this weekend, and I think they're fishing Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, uh, so, uh, wait, isn't, isn't that mission thing the passing the food out Saturday at the school? You know what? Wow, that's wow. doing more weekends. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. Oh, it? It? we've got something above that. That's right, bro. You better get that part of the We're going to throw you Saturday. off the boat, man, and it starts getting rocky and stuff. <laughs> But yeah, that's Saturday, and then that buck will be, but no, no kidding, Trey, help us remember, and all your time, and loving your flesh, yeah. <laughs> tell Buck, I'll try to get, my to get yourself out of the way long enough, sure just to tell Buck to call Tara, it's hard, okay, I don't know, I understand, all right, do what? Boy, ain't we all. Good grief. What was that? He said, he said you better be glad it ain't a work salvation. And I said, I am number one who's glad that it's not a work salvation. Good grief. Uh, I'm going to give Trey a reprieve. I got Buck's number. I'll call him one day. <laughs> Thank you, Lord spoke. You answered prayer. You answered prayer. I believe that's answered prayer. Amen. There's no sin me. I'll go right here. No, none of that. It's like what tickles me is that uh, I was reading. Uh, well, uh, after me, it was Wednesday night. We were talking about Isaiah chapter 6. And you know, and the Lord, God makes that statement. It says, who? You know what I mean? It's like, who can we send? And, and I was dwelling on that. And like in this room, you've got the angels who are massive. God's train is like filling the room. His Holy Spirit. I mean, just this unbelievable sight of the glory and the majesty of God. And Isaiah is like standing there, and he's like, I mean, I can real, I can relate, because he has seen all this glory, and he goes, oh man, I'm going to die. I mean, that's his thoughts. I've seen the, I've seen God. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not worthy to see God. I'm a man of unclean lips. I can't hold it together. He's like, I mean, can imagine in that moment that, that feeling you would get in your stomach. I'm fixing to die. I mean, I have seen God. I'm going to die. So you got the angels in the room. God, His Spirit, is in the room. And then He asks a question. Who can we send? I mean, Isaiah can... <laughs> he can look all around. I mean, bro, you're the only one in the room. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and it's when He says that question, in my mind, in my thinking, I was like, He asked that question. And then it was like Isaiah was like, send me. But then I got to thinking about it. I don't know if it was that way or not. He's standing in the room with God, these angels, and he's the only one. 
So, you know, when your mom used to be like, you know, you're the only one in the room, and your mom says, boy, I wish somebody would take out the trash. <laughs> or I wish somebody would turn that television off. <laughs> you're the only one in the room. You know what I'm saying? So you're the only one in the room, and your mom and dad make this, this statement of, boy, I wish somebody would scratch my back. There's nobody else in here. You know what I'm saying? But maybe... So when I was thinking about this, and, and, and I'm not taking away from the glory of it all, but he's the only one in the room, Randy. Guess what? So are we. So are we. He makes that statement. Who can we send? And Isaiah is the only one there. He's the only one there. So when I was reading that, I was like, what do you mean, who are you going to send? I'm the only one in here. But Isaiah says, well, send me. Guys, it's the same. It's no different. God saved you. He sent you. When God entered your heart and your life, the same requirement of Isaiah, the same question that God asked Isaiah in the middle of all that glory, who can we send? Guys, you're the only one that can do what God has planned for your life. You're it. Man, ain't that something? You're the only, God's plan's going on with or without you. You're the only one that can fill that slot that has your name on it. Nobody else can, can serve God and be Jesse Bunch. Jesse is the only one. Who are we going to send? Trey? You're it, man. I mean, I'm sorry. That's the way it is. Jake, I, 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 this, it's it for me. Like, who, we, who can we send? I'm it. For the calling on your life. And it is a specific calling. It's a specific plan. There's no way around that. God's saying to you specifically. Keaton? Who can we send? Now, some of you, are we going to answer the call? Or are we going to, you know, man, I'm getting way off topic. It's good, though. When I read that, all the time that I read it, I had this man, you know, and I, and I had envisioned Isaiah, and it could have been that way. And I had Isaiah just, I mean, making this, and I was like, gosh, in all this, Isaiah steps up. And he's like, you know what? Send me. It's like he just steps up and his biceps are bulging out. And, you know what I'm saying? In my mind, that's, that's the vision I get of this massive warrior. I mean, this guy that just for the cause of Christ is not scared of anything. But guys, I don't know anybody that's not scared of something. I don't know how. I mean, it, 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 what, you read scriptures that says when I'm weak, he is strong. You know what I'm saying? When, when, when I must decrease so he can increase, that shatters the vision of the... You know what God's looking for? He ain't looking for a dude with a six-pack and biceps. Thank God I wouldn't make it. God's looking. I got witnesses back there. Got more witnesses. You know what God's looking for? You. You fit the description. Perfectly. You fit the description perfectly. You. You know what God wants, Colin? He wants you. Just like you. I mean, God saved you just like you are. God wants you to fulfill this perfect plan, this major plan. His train fills the room. The angels are like yelling back and forth one to another. I mean, one's like, he's holy. He's holy. He's holy. And the same time he's saying that, the other one is looking right back at the other and saying, He's holy. He's holy. They're doing nothing but standing around the throne of God, declaring nothing but His glory. He's holy. He's holy. Isaiah steps into that. Who can we send? Who's good enough? Who can we send, guys? Who, who in this room? Who can we send right now? People are dying and going to hell. People are dying without Christ. People know a little bit about it, but they don't know the risen Savior. Why? Because maybe we have it through the plan of God and God's will presented the truth. He said, today's the day of salvation. You say it's not for me. Maybe this is for me and this isn't for me. Guys, it's all our jobs. It's all our jobs. We are so caught up in ourselves. That we can't tell. That I, you, why we can't tell things about God's... I, I, okay, I'm speaking myself. Start to say that. 
Utah. My number one priority is me. That's the truth. That's why you get up and go to work. That's why you, I mean, dress the way you dress. That's why you, you know why we can't tell people about Jesus Christ. We're, we're concerned about ourselves. Or are we concerned about anything? God's called you. God has called you specifically. God has called you, not somebody else. God has called you. You know that guy that you go to school with or that girl that you go to school with or that guy or the girl we work with? You know, it's probably in God's plan that you tell him about Christ. You agree with that? Everybody? On the same page with that? I mean, if God saved you for His glory and His will, what brings glory to Christ? Telling people about Christ. When we look at people, when we look at people, what do we say? When we look at people, what do we say? When we look at somebody in our walk, God needs us, okay? God needs us. God needs us to work. He don't need us. He can do what he wants to do. That's not my point. God really don't need anything. God's God. But God wants you to love him enough to tell other people about Christ. God wants you to love him enough to live a godly life that's pleasing to him, in communion with him, to talk with him, to be with him. And then God wants you to love him enough to tell other people about him. Because, guys, that's the only answer. The only answer is Jesus Christ. Right here in John chapter 8. I'm not even going to get to John chapter 9, I don't think. But right here, Jesus Christ is talking to the Jews about what's the truth. What is the truth? The only truth is Jesus Christ. It goes back to, I say it so many times, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So what is truth? Pilate asked that question when he was standing in front of the Christ. And, and Jesus like, I speak the truth. And he got so confused, he said, what is truth? Well, Jesus is truth. Nothing else matters in life save Jesus Christ. Your life right now, is it pleasing to God or is it not? Because nothing else matters. God's looking for people to sin, and you're, you're those people. So how are we living our lives? Are we living where God can use us? Or are we caught up in something else? What are we holding on to? I want to read this real fast. Jesus answered them, verse 49, John chapter 8. Jesus answered. He said, you know what? First off, they tell him he's got a devil. Now, if you want to see some people get tore up, read every time Jesus Christ addresses the Jews and the Pharisees. There's a pattern. Every time Jesus Christ confronts the, the church crowd, every time Jesus Christ like brings the truth to life to the Jews and the churchy folks and the Pharisees, they end up getting their feelings hurt and they get mad. It's a pattern. So when something happens in church, be careful about getting mad, okay? Because that, that means we could be just like these people. So verse 49, Jesus said, they just got through telling he's a devil. Jesus Christ is telling the truth right here. We're going to pick up our reading 49. It says, I ain't got a devil, but I honor my father, and you're dishonoring me. He says, I'm honored. I'm bringing the truth. God spoke to Isaiah and said, I need somebody to go. He's like, you know what, send me. Jesus Christ is standing right here, toe to toe, unashamed. He's God. He's telling them the truth. He says, I ain't got a devil, but I honor my father, and you're dishonoring me. He's like, he's almost like, guys, we're the same. We're two and one. Like, you say you love God. You say you love God, but you dishonor me. Verse 50, and I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeks and judge, he's like, I am not here for myself. I'm not here for myself. This is bigger than me. I don't, I'm not presenting the truth and the gospel of Jesus Christ to hear myself talk. He's like, guys, I'm not in it for gain. He had nothing. He walked around. He went every, walked everywhere he went. He never even had a place to lay down. He, the Bible says, boxes have holes. Birds got a nest and I got nothing. That's what Jesus said. What was he doing it for? There was no gain. There was no gain. 51. Truly, I say to you, if a man will keep my sayings, he'll never see death. What's he talking about? He's like, if you'll get saved, if you will accept Christ, if you'll accept me, you'll never see death. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's like, guys, you're missing it. You're missing it. It's not about you. It's about me. And if you've seen me, 
You've seen the father. They're two and one. They couldn't get past the fact that they're working for this, that they're having to do this. And, and to be honest with you, the Bible says, like, man, Trey, they're blind. their eyes were blinded. And I've heard people say, and I've even kind of alluded to the fact that if Jesus Christ would have came back on clouds of glory, they would have accepted him. No, they wouldn't, Randy, because they loved themselves. You know why they couldn't get all along with Jesus Christ? It's because they couldn't see past themselves. It's right here clearly in 49, 50, and 51. It says, I'm not seeking my own glory. I'm seeking the glory of him who sent me. God looked at Isaiah and said, I need a man. Golly, but Jesus Christ, he, he, we needed a Savior. We needed a Savior. Right here, Jesus Christ, he says, I'm the Savior. He said, but it ain't about me. It's about the Father who sent me. 51, 52. Then said the Jews, all right, we got it figured out now. We don't think you got a devil. We know you got a devil now. And they said, now that we know you got a devil, because I'm going to tell you something. Abraham's dead, and the prophets that thou are, you're talking about. If, and Jesus says, if a man keep my sayings, he'll never taste death. They say, like, hold up here now. Abraham is Father Abraham. Let's straighten this out. Father Abraham, is father, there's no other title for Father Abraham. He's Father Abraham, and he's dead. So what are you saying, Jesus? That he didn't trust in God? He said, no. That's not what I'm saying. He said, are you greater than Father Abraham, which is already dead? And the prophets are dead. Who, who do you make yourself out to be? Who do you make yourself out to be? Here's what Jesus said. If I honor myself, if I honor myself, if I put myself up there, if I do this on my own, what's it amount to? Nothing. If I do this on my own, guys, where's it going to get you? Nothing. It is my Father that honors me of whom you say that He's your God. Yet you have not even known Him. You don't even know Him. But I know Him. And, and if I should say that I didn't know Him, then that makes me a liar, just like you are. But if I do know Him and keep His sayings, thank you, Lord, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and he was glad. He says, if I say that I don't know. I mean, guys, they can't get on board with this. They can't get on board with it. They can't get themselves out of the way. He says, but if I say that I don't know him, then I'm a liar just like you are. So how many of us, here's the question. How many of us know him? Don't raise your hand. How many of us know him? And how many of us know him that our friends know that we know him? Can your actions speak for you? Absolutely. Can your actions speak for you? They sure can. I mean, I've said it. it, it it's in the Bible. Your, your actions reflect your beliefs. So right here it says, if I say that I don't know him, then that makes me a liar just like you are. So if my life is a reflection of something other than Jesus Christ, and I say that I know him, what does that make me? If I say that I know him, and my life reflects something else, what does that make me? Well, that's hard, ain't it? Guys, there's people in this room that say they know Jesus Christ and your life don't reflect it. I know it doesn't. I've seen it for myself. I say that I know it. And my life don't always reflect it. What's that make me? Say it. It's a liar. You're a liar. He says, if I know him, and I say that, he said, because I know him, I know him, and I say that I don't know him. He said, that makes me a liar just like you are. So for those of us who do know him, and you deny him, what does that make you? It ain't easy, is it? Well, I can't stand being called a liar. Gosh, I hate that. I mean, you know, fighting words. I mean, that's fighting words. And like, you know, like if you've ever been accused of something, and, and turns out that uh, 
you know, you were in the right, you got accused of it. I mean, the, in, the other person's a liar. But for everybody in here who is not perfect, you know what it was like when you lied? Like when you told the lie and then you de you defended a lie? I've done it. I mean, if it, it comes down to arguing my sisters, I've been defending whatever to the death. You know what I mean? Y'all done it. Je I mean, but now on a serious note, Jesus Christ said, if I say, he's like, guys, you're, pu you're putting me in a corner. Like you're backing me up here. I've got nowhere else to go. I'm telling you the truth. It is 100% true. And if you want me to say that I don't know him, then you're just asking me to lie. I can't lie. He's my father. He's in me. The only reason I'm here is because he sent me here. The only reason I stand in front of you and take this ridicule and everything is to honor him. The whole reason of the gospel of Jesus Christ was for us. It was for Christ to die. Christ says you're backing me up into something that I can't do. It's a perfect plan. It's going to have to go through. So for those of us who know Him, and we don't live our lives for Him, we're saying we don't know Him. We're denying Him. We're saying it doesn't exist. What does that make us if we do know Him? It makes us a liar. 56, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it. And he was glad. This talks about Father Abraham. I mean, this is the whole plan, guys. From Genesis to Revelation. The plan was Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ says, guys, I cannot. I'm here for one reason. I'm here for one reason. And for that reason, I cannot back up. There is no tuck tail and turn in me. I'm going to stand here till it takes my life. It's going to take my life. But I'm going to proclaim the truth. I'm going to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ because I am not a liar. I am not a liar. It said, Then said the Jews to him, How can you say that Abraham rejoiced? And you're not even 50 years old yet. 58. And Jesus said unto them, Truly, truly, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. I've been here, guys. You're missing it. I was in the beginning. I was... At the start, when Jesus Christ, when, it, when God looked down and said, let there be light, that was me. I'm the beginning, I'm the end, I'm Alpha, I'm Omega. It's always been about me. I can't tell anything other than the truth of Jesus Christ because that's what it is. And I can't back up and I am not a liar. And Isaiah looked up to God and he says, you know what? Send me. Send me. Jesus Christ goes through this right here. And he says, you know what? Send me. The story don't change. It's not something that's new today and different tomorrow. 59. What verse 8? Then took they up stones. And they chunked them out. You don't have to respond. You don't have to respond to us. They throw rocks at us. He got them to a... The truth had gotten them to such a point that the only thing they could think to do to God of the universe was to jump rocks up. And Jake, go back to verse 30 and 31 and tell where them guys started out at. That's the end result. What is, what's 31, 30 and 31 say about it? Verse 8, chapter 8? Yep. Let's, let's back up, though. Let's back up. What do you want to back up to? We need to get catch, what, 21? The point I was trying to make is these are, these are Jews that said they believed in him. Yep. 20, let's start in 22. Then said Jesus, then said the Jews, Will he kill himself because he saith, whether I go, you cannot come. He says, what they say, he's going to murder himself. Are they going to, you know, is he going to uh, kill himself because he says, well, where I'm going, he says, I'm going to follow you, you can't come. He's talking about his death, burial, and resurrection. Verse 23, he said unto them, you are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, but I am not of this world. Verse 24, I said therefore to you that you shall die in your sins for if you believe not that I am the Christ, then you shall die in your sins. 
Then said they to him, Who are you? And Jesus said, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I've not changed. They said, who are you? He's like, guys, you, you, you know, now, okay, you're coming around. I'm him. You know, the Messiah, the chosen one, you know, you know, the, the Isaiah 53, uh, Jeremiah, you know, everything that you, you know, this, this, that I, I'm he. Verse 25, then said they to him, who are you? And Jesus said unto him, the same that I said unto you from the beginning, I have many things to say and to judge you. But he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of who? Of him. Back to the same point. He's saying, look, guys, I'm telling you what God's told me to tell you. I can't do nothing else. Verse 27. Then they didn't understand that he spake of God the Father. 28. Then said Jesus unto them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. And he, and he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I do always those things which please him. Thank you, Randy. I'm going to keep going, but I love that. What's he say right there? I do always. He's like, I, I, I always do. Verse 30. And he spake these words, and many, on him, many believed on him. Verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews, which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then you're my disciples indeed. And if you shall know the truth, what's it do? The truth will set you free. God, oh, that's good. Living in freedom. You know, that's it, guys. I mean, that is it. This thing isn't a bound up. I mean, it's not. It's God has set us free by the gospel of Jesus Christ. So right here at the end of the chapter, I mean, them guys, they, they, they can't get along with it. They can't understand it. They can't get on board. The freedom that's there, they, they, they can't share it. Because they can't get past their, past their sales. I want to challenge you tonight. I want to challenge you. Don't make yourself out to be a liar. Guys, if you believe it, put 100% into it. I mean, if you believe it, it's going to reflect on the outside of you. Now, you can go, you can leave from here, and you can try to put on a better show. Okay? You can. You can clean it up. You can clean your language up at school. Uh, you can start carrying your Bible. I mean, you can clean. There's some things you can do on the outside to clean this thing up and look a lot better, but it won't last. It will not last. Guys, the only thing that's light is what Jesus says. I can't do anything other than what God has sent me to do. If we could live like that, that's the freedom. That's the freedom that Christ gives. Guys, think about it. Think about it. The people that you're surrounded by every day, your own lives, your own lives, do they reflect Jesus Christ? Or are we liars? Gosh, I hate being. I don't want to be a liar. I don't want to be a liar. But if we say that we know him and we don't keep his commandments, then we're liars. What first John? I don't want to be a liar. And you know what? God is asking. He's asking, who can we sing? And you know who he wants? He wants you. He wants you. Kind of grace Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that you've given us. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the lesson. Lord, thanks for how you shine it in our hearts. Uh, Lord, I pray for this group. I pray for us. Lord, that we would be those people when you ask. I need somebody to sing that we would step up and be that person. Lord, I don't want to be a liar. I want my actions to reflect my life, and I want my life to reflect Jesus Christ. And I pray that for each and every one in this room, Lord, that that would be our ultimate goal. And God, I also pray that, uh, Lord, if if there's some or just straddling the fence or God that don't know you as our personal Savior. Lord, we we can't hide it. We might cover it up for a while. Lord, but the truth always comes out. Lord, the truth always comes out. And we'll be known as we're known. Lord, I pray for strength. I pray for courage. I 
and pray if there's anyone here Lord, who don't know you tonight they would accept you as our personal Savior because Lord you're still in saving business Lord I thank you for last Sunday night and the witness that some of these young people gave and people at the church gave just what a wonderful service Lord to baptize that many in your name and it's in Christ's name that we pray Amen I didn't say the seniors everybody else can